So I got a new daily. Here it is. I knew I wanted a first-gen Cayenne for a daily driver, but I had a couple requirements. I wanted it to be a V8 first of all. None of that VR6 stuff, I wanted the power. You know, I'm an American muscle guy at heart. You guys have seen the Mustang on the channel before this car, need to be V8. It also needed to be stock. I didn't want to pick up someone else's project. Yes, I'm planning on modifying this car. Yes, there's a ton of built Cayennes out there, but I always prefer getting a stock car over a modified car because it's not picking up someone else's project and someone thinks someone else touched already. Also, I wanted it to be naturally aspirated. There's a ton of fantastic Cayenne turbos out there and they make a lot of power. They're a lot of fun. But I wanted the stock reliability of a naturally aspirated 4.5 liter or 4.8 liter V8 in the Cayennes. I just don't want to deal with any of the turbos crapping out on me and taking the engine out. And the last requirement, you're going to laugh at this one, it had to be blue. I don't know what it is with blue cars in me, but I love blue cars. My Carrera 4S, my first 996 was blue, midnight blue. This is Lopez blue. I love it. So, you know, I was looking around a lot. I think I wanted a 957 at first. You know, when I was originally started looking at Cayennes, I really wanted the updated headlights, the updated mirror look, the updated taillights, but I couldn't find anything. And of course, if it was a 957, it had to be marine blue because that was the only blue that came in that year and that generation of Cayennes. So it had to be marine blue, couldn't find anything. Then, you know, I considered 955s. I considered a titanium edition. As you know, those have the two-tone interiors. I wasn't a fan of that. It just didn't look right to me. It looked very old and just not vintage looking, just kind of something they tried out. So a couple months went by, a lot of months went by for me looking for a Cayenne and this guy popped up out of nowhere on Craigslist. The owner had listed it. The story goes that it was a one owner car owned in Nevada by an older lady. She had passed away, the son inherited it, yada, yada. You know, the story goes on. But there was like 50 people that contacted this one owner for this car because, you know, she didn't list it too high for a price. And I was one of two people that she answered, apparently, on Craigslist. And the other guy was coming to see the car later that night, so I beat him out by about an hour in terms of seeing the car, and I bought it right then and there. And I ended up scoring this Lopez Blue 955 Cayenne. It is a fantastic spec, in my opinion. It's got air suspension, so it's nice and comfy on the road. Yes, I know, air suspension isn't fantastic for off-road, but I'm not going to be doing any crazy off-roading. So the air suspension is super comfy for a daily driver on road. It's a slick top, so no sunroof. It's got the Lapis Blue paint that I just adore. The engine was solid, the suspension was solid. This car had pretty much never been used, which I love. The back seats were like nobody had ever sat in them. They were rock hard, which is hilarious. So I knew when I saw this thing, I had to pick it up. And I did, I brought it home and I was super happy with it. There's a bunch of videos of these first gen Cayennes online. You know, people are raving about them. It's like a cult following with them right now. And of course, that's because of the off-road things you can do with them. People love them and they're loving to modify them. But I think there's something special about the way they drive too. When you drive one of these things, they are just so comfortable. They're so luxurious. It's one of those cars you just hop in and you instantly understand why everyone loves them. So let's talk about why I went with a 955 over a 957 because the choice isn't really that clear. In fact, I think it's more of the opposite. The 957 has the updated headlights, the updated taillights, the updated mirrors, just the more modern look. The 957 is a lot more reliable than the 955 in terms of engine wise, the 4.8 liter in the 957 versus the 955 that has a 4.5 liter V8 because these 955s were plagued with a lot of bore scoring issues. It's not a lot of these 955s that were plagued with the bore scoring issue, but if you wanna reduce your issues with an engine, and I feel like everyone does, you'll get a 957. But I don't know, I just love the way the 955 looks. It's like a blown up 996, a 911, and I love that about it. You know, it was the first Cayenne to ever come out, the first way they made this vehicle, and the car, just kind of has this weird vintage look. It literally looks like they enlarged a 911 on Photoshop and made it a real thing. So I love that about it. And that's why I went 955 over 957. Even though I didn't get the modern look, I love this thing. If you don't know much about the first gen Cayennes, these were pretty much engineered and built to save Porsche as a company. They were risking going bankrupt, so they developed the Cayenne to make more sales for themselves, to get people to buy more cars. And in doing that, they had to make sure the car was really special. So they over-engineered this car. 
They put all of them with a two-way transfer case in them. You could option them with a rear diff locker. You could option them with multiple other options in the interiors to make them more comfy, you know, double pane glass. I think they even came with rear sunshades. Of course, sunroof. The later models came with a full panoramic roof along the entire roof. A lot of the GTSs came with that. The, some of them, a lot of them in Europe even came with a manual transmission. Not so many in America here. In America, we got the manual transmission in the V6 and the later GTSs of the 957 generation. But there were a lot of options on these cars that you could put on them to suit your needs, to buy one. And these cars are really capable stock, both on-road and off-road. They're super comfortable on-road while you're daily driving. And off-road, I mean, Harrison Schwann even did Hell's Gate in a stock 957 Porsche Cayenne which is insane. And I'm sorry if I pronounced your name a little wrong, Harrison, but that is just crazy to me. So I think we've proved that these things are super capable and there's a reason why everyone loves them. So yes, I have plans for this car to make it my own and just perfect, but I'm not gonna go too far, I don't think. I wanna make it an OEM Plus style. And what I mean by that is I want this thing to look like it could have rolled out of the Porsche factory in 2004. Obviously, it would not have rolled out of the Porsche factory like this back in the day because they didn't offer these options and things that I would do this vehicle I already have done. But I want it to look like it could have rolled out of the factory like it sits right now and in the future. So I don't want to do any modern modifications in terms of like, you know, crazy hexagon looking lights or just really modern stuff in today's age that off-road cars have, you know, like built Tacomas and built 4Runners and things like that. Those cars look great but I wanna make this more OEM plus and vintage style looking, I would say. I think my best term for it is a beach cruiser vibe. Something you can just bring on the beach, drive on the beach, and just kind of look good doing it. Circular old looking lights from 2004, maybe on the front bumper and the roof rack, things like that. Now, as you can see, I already have some modifications on it. I have the Sherpa Ramstein roof rack in the aluminum coating color. I love the way that looks. I love the way it contrasts with the B pillars and the trim around the car. I also have the spare tire mounted up there. And I also have a Rome 128 liter box mounted up there with Sherpa Rome mounts, which I just love the way everything turned out. I think it looks so cool does make the vehicle look a little tall. So maybe we'll look at some different options in the future for mounting the spare tire and things like that. But I think for right now it sits perfect. And then in the future, I'll go a little bit further and make it more of that OEM plus style look I'm looking for. If you're into the first gen Cayenne world, you know there's not a lot of content about them online. Of course, there's a few people building Cayennes on the internet and things like that. But I'm thinking about documenting my process with this car, the modifications I put on it, how to install them, things like that. I feel like I would like to add to that community. So if you're down for that, if you wanna see that, drop a comment, let me know. But until then, this is gonna be my daily driver. I'm loving driving it and I'm really enjoying the driving experience about it. And I don't plan to stop driving anytime soon. I'm gonna rack up a miles on this thing as far as I can go until it breaks on me, which it will because it's a first gen Cayenne. But until then, I'm gonna drive it. So thank you very much for watching guys. This is the new introduction to this car. I have one more car coming to the channel, one more new car that you guys haven't seen yet. I think it's pretty cool. I think you guys are gonna love it. It is a sports car, but I'll leave that till the next video. I'll see you guys there. Peace.